everybody, Colin Stevenson here, joined by my hero, John Leonard. Hi, John. Hi. We've been talking about parenting, John, and how important it is to understand a child's uniqueness. Now, what we also need to speak about is the, the role of a marriage and how the behaviour in a marriage affects children as well. Because children learn from their parents, as well as not understanding their uniqueness or being taught their uniqueness or being treated as a unique person, they then learn behaviours through marriage as well, which can be quite difficult. Right. So we talked in a previous episode about that ACE test. Yeah. And in that ACE test, we talked about how the kid's role model adult affects them. So what we want to remember is, is these kids, their unconscious is picking up behaviors. Yeah. So what happens is, is a kid will look to somebody, it doesn't that necessarily have to be their mom or dad, but they're going to look to somebody as to what they believe it means to be an adult. And as they look at that person and they're saying that that's what they want to be, their unconscious starts going, oh, then that's what I need to be like. So now the kid's behavior in their unconscious brain is being affected by their role model adult. Well, notice they, if, if the kid is, is watching somebody who's in a marriage, the kid is watching that person interact with another person a lot. And now that kid is picking up how they should treat somebody that they've interacted with a lot. For an example, a kid now looks at their brother and sister and says, well, here's how I should treat you because I'm watching my role model adult treat their spouse this way, someone they see a lot. This is how you do that. So parents wonder, why are they treating their brother or sister that way? And one of the questions, you know, is, well, how do you two treat each other? Yeah. And that's tough. This is a tough conversation to have and to realize with people is that you, what, how you handle your marriage is how you're telling their kids to handle other people, especially people they see most often. Yeah. So we can even take it further. It's not just marriage. It can be relationships. It can be partnerships, any of these types of things. But the role models in that kind of proximity that are looking after the children we really need to take a look at that and the people have to take a look at themselves first. And that's why when we talk and when I can I help people and stuff, it's, it's always starting with yourself. What are we putting out there? Change yourselves and then the world will change round about you. Right. So this is an area that you and I like to talk about off camera a lot. But when you look at people that have certain, um, they'll say, you know, like if there's certain cancers or there's certain illnesses and they say it's genetic, but they can't find a genetic marker or a tendency for it. I believe our thought process is what actually affects our health more than anything. Yep. And again, that's the other half of the model I have with sleep and with everything else and what's happening with that repair. A lot of the illnesses we pass down to our kids is through our thought processes. And they're starting to tie a lot of these illnesses like cancer, heart, atto- heart attack, stroke, you know, those type of things. They're, they're starting to, to uh, attach those more to people's thought processes than they are actually to anything necessarily environmental. So what happens is, is kids will take on their parents' thought process. So as a parent, do you realize you're teaching your kids how to think, even though you can't explain how you think? Yeah, I totally get that. So can we put this down to the thought process? And then obviously a negative thought process will cause negative frequency, which will cause negative chemicals being produced into the body, which then starts to harm our organs and starts to have, you know, just a general well-being. And that's why I found, since working with you, now you and I are still on a journey. We both learn from each other. Every time that we speak, we are always gaining energy in what we do. I have found since I started working alongside you and learning your ways and the science and, and, and how to put it into my life and help others put it into theirs, that I've not been sick. I think I've been sick properly once. And that was when this, kind of whatever was coming round. Now, 
the way that I was living in the home at the time, I will say that the energy was low. So because the energy was low, that would have caused me to, you know, have a lower immune system. But before that, I was always in a high. So would that have something to do with similar, similar actions? Right. So there's this amazing book written that I really enjoy called The Boy Who Was Raised a Dog. And one of the chapters in that book, and I'm big picture, so I'm not going to get every little detail right about this, but one of the stories in the chapters, there was a girl who was about four years old and she weighed 24 pounds and she could not gain weight. Now, if we're an animal, you could hook a feeding tube up to us and we'll gain weight. However, humans, in order to gain weight, humans need to have a certain hormone released in order to gain weight. And that hormone occurs with words, tone, and touch. So if there are caring words, a caring tone, and a caring touch, it produces that hormone in our bodies. One of the points of that book is that once a kid is pegged at like six months to their weight percentile, in America, they start tracking that number. And if the kid falls below that percentile, the assumption is, is the kid is being abused. If they're getting the same words, tone, and touch, then they will maintain that percentile. If they are not getting that, they'll fall away from it. What he did was he held her, and, and the girl's background is traumatic, and the way her mom talked to her is traumatic. And he talked to her, and you know, words, tone, and touch, and she started accumulating weight. Now, from zero to 21 years old, we are supposed to be supposed to be on a linear weight gain. After 21, we're not growing or gaining weight anymore because we are falling apart. Now, why would words, tone and touch still be important after 21? Because how we repair or how we handle illness is the same thing as is how we grow. So words, tone and touch affect our health. And so exactly what you're saying. So if the parents are habituated to a 160 thought process, and we talked about all this with the happiness, you know, and we talked all about this in another video, but if the parents are habituated, they like to stay at this 160 distracted thought process, the kid will acquire their thought process at 160. If the parents are very focused and studious and 80, the kids will acquire that 80. If the parents are very traumatic and 320 and yelling and screaming, the kids will acquire that 320. Hopefully the parents are flow and that's what I like to teach parents how to do is flow and the kids will be in flow. So notice if the parents are at 160 and distracted and one event away from going off and then they say, you know what's wrong with my kids? They're distracted and one event away from going off. Whose fault is that? Yeah. It's the parents. But I, I, I wanna make this one point. So one of my favorite unconscious confrontations, and I love to ask this of guys, is I like to say, who have daughters, I like to say, so do you want your, do you want your daughter to bring home a guy that's exacting, exa is acting exactly the way you're acting towards her? So that's a, a very strong question. Most men will say no. Because and why are you acting like that? Exactly. Because that's what you're doing. You're setting your daughter up to say, oh, that's how guys treat women. I better look for a guy who treats me like that. Yeah. And the, when, since I've been working with you, I've become a lot more myself, a lot more involved in my uniqueness, a lot more flow, a lot more everything. And if somebody, if you asked me that question just now, I would say yes. I would genuinely, and I would genuinely mean absolutely yes. But until two years ago, I would have said no. And I really mean that. Not because I'm a bad person or was a bad person. I just didn't know me. And I would want my daughter to have the best. But now I believe that I can give her the best because I've worked with yourself and that now I'm flowing and I'm able to give her that freedom and, and speak to her and be with her with her uniqueness. Right. So, so when it comes to helping people with their marriages, the analogy I like to give them is what we do with teachers. So what happens with teachers is they are trying to teach the kids something. They're focused on learning. And then what happens is the kids, it's out of their uniqueness, the kids start misbehaving. So the teacher starts stressing 
about the behavior and we're not getting the learning done and they go to 160, maybe even 320 and they try to deal with the behavior and try to teach harder. Well, now they're teaching in a thought process that the kids aren't gonna learn in. Yeah. Then the teacher gets frustrated that the kids aren't learning and then they stress out more. And then when the school year is over, they're exhausted and they need three months off. This was a profession they chose because they love it. They didn't choose a, this profession to get rich. Of course. They chose this profession because they love it. Why would anybody lose energy doing a profession that they supposedly love? It's because they're not in the right thought process and they're not handling it right. Yeah. And I would say the same thing for the marriage. So when it comes to marriage, when the parents are stressed out with each other, the kids are going to be stressed out. And one of the things we do is I help people put their marriages together well. And all of a sudden, more than 50% of the issues what they're having with their kids just dissolve. Absolutely. And I had this conversation uh, with a person last night about, so they were exhorter server, a uh, yeah, exhorter server. And they were talking about when their child, um, you know, they wake up in the morning, they're like, morning, let's get breakfast, you know, charging up and the kid goes, I'm not interested and starts messing around. And then the exhorter parent then starts losing it because they're not being met energetically. It's not because the kid's being bad. So then they become stressed and they start giving it, well, do as you're told, start doing this. I want you to get your breakfast and I want it. So again, what the parent is feeling gets projected onto the kid. And then the kid then doesn't enjoy that experience anymore, whether it's breakfast, whether it's learning homework, any of these type of things. So it all comes down again to the living kind of proximity, the way they're staying, and especially if the, if the marriage or the relationship is not being met, they get into this relationship because they loved each other. They love the relationship. And then what they do is they try so hard to keep it that they then come out of flow and they still love each other, but then they try and come back together again and the kids are being affected. And, you know, it's like, when people say to me, oh, do you know your kids or even my dog? And I, I'm just going to take this back a second. They say, your dog's so calm, your dog's so cool, your dog's so well behaved. They say the same with my kids. And they say that's because the way that I speak to them, the way that I treat them, the way that I look after them, tone, touch, you know, these type of things. And this is where that we can change everything by ourselves. You nailed it. So I, this is, I'm gonna end by just showing how I do this, but you just perfectly nailed it because what can happen is, is as much as you talk to the kid the right way, if you're feeling stressed out about your relationship, the kids sense that and it does affect them. And so what you just said, so I, whenever I look at helping a marriage, I see a marriage as, as two people or a relationship as they come together, they, like you just said, you said it perfectly. They came together because they loved each other. And then what happened was, they got a different objective at some point and they either start growing more or they start going backwards. And when that happens, I like to say it causes a stress. It causes a rotation. So now all of a sudden this hand is in, and it can happen from growing a ton. It can happen from not growing. Now there's a stress and they feel it and the kids feel it. And what has to happen is they have to come apart and they have to come back together in a different way. And then there's another stress. Then they got to come apart and they come back together. You talk to people who've been married a long time and they'll say, well, marriage is hard work. We've gone through a lot of ups, ups and downs and they can go through different periods of their marriage where this happened and they had to make this adjustment. Then this happened, they had to make that adjustment. And it's like, well, that sounds exhausting. You know, is this really the way it's supposed to be? And so what I do is when I help a married couple, the first thing I do is I do this. I say, look it, let's, let's, we have three issues here. Let's pull this apart and let's focus on each of you being the best you. Yeah. So what I did with you, Colin, I would do with both of these people individually. Let's make this person the best version of them. Yeah. Let's make this person the best version of them. Absolutely. Now that they're their best version, can they see if this comes together or not? Because what happens is when people get together, they probably are not getting together as their best version of themselves. Absolutely. And then they start hopefully becoming their best version or less or less their best version and it changes. And it is possible that two people were never meant to be married. 
two people can be the exact opposite. There's no way to put this together. But this person was in this place, which wasn't their best. This person was in this place, wasn't this best, and it looked perfect. Yeah. But neither of them are that person. And so that's what I try to do is I try to do this because when you find out who you both really are, you can objectively look at it and go, oh, this isn't about if you don't love me, I'm a bad person. Now I'm a high self-esteem. This is what I'm looking for. And you might not be it or, or I might not be it. And they can do this amicably versus no, we got to hold this together and, it, and it's wrecking the kids. Yeah. That's the problem is you, you put something together that isn't meant to be together and it stresses out the kids. If you do come together, there's ways to go, look, we might not be a perfect match, but I'm willing to make this adjustment for your benefit and it doesn't affect who I am. You're willing to make this adjustment for who I am and it doesn't affect me. And I like to say, basically to end this, there's three kind of measures. I like to say, like, what percent of you being you do they appreciate? What percent do you adjust that doesn't affect you that they'll appreciate? And what percent is just isn't it? And I will tell you, in, in my marriage, I'm going to say there's 75% of me and 75% of my wife is just who she is, who I am. It meshes perfectly. Yeah. And then I'm going to say there's like another 24% that I'm willing to adjust that doesn't affect who I am that helps her. And there's a 24% that she's willing to adjust that doesn't affect who she is that helps me. And then there's 1% of us that are just not the right place. Mm -hmm. And so we are working on dealing with that, dissolving it and making some uh, adjustments, but it's, it's 1%. And so it's like, this is a really good situation. And, and I end the day with more energy being married to her. She ends the day with more energy being married to me. And that's, that's just the honest, you know, opinion about being married. It's, it's if someone tells me, oh, we're a hundred percent and a hundred percent, it's like, that thing's going to fall apart. You're not being real honest about it. But that's what I try to do is I try to help each person be themselves. And so when they come together like that, it does dissolve all these issues or more than half of the issues with the kids. Yeah, absolutely. And I just, again, I can't reiterate enough. Look at yourself. Don't look at your partner. Don't try and change your partner. Don't change them. Change yourself. Come into your, to your own then look at them. The amount of people that are staying together because the way of life financially, you know, not wanting anyone to talk about them. Do you know, it's, it's harming your children. Anyone that's been lucky enough to be blessed with children, you are then going to ruin them and they might be needy adults, they might be mentally ill when they get older because they've taken on your traits and your stress and your hormones. And please, just everybody, just think about it a little bit. Thank you very much. And thank you, John. And I look forward to speaking to you next week. Take care. Bye.